hope this video just is great from bitsbox.co.uk here and you'll notice this big ugly black box behind me that's what we're going to be looking at today so that is the housing for my 3D printers as I've now got them set up um, inside my home in my little painting room here um, normally they're in the Bitsbox studio so that's essentially um, a big outbuilding I've got at the back of my property um, which is great in the summer because we have a um, it's nice and airy in there, we have really good ventilation, um, which you can do in the summer. In the winter, not so much, we have to have all the doors and windows closed and the heat is on, which, yeah, just really not not the best um, solution for having 3D printers, especially when you've got two or three on the go for most of the day. Um, and I also do some printing in the evenings, um, just to make sure we're on top of everything. And I don't want to be heating that room in the evening, whether I'm in there or not. It does cost a lot to heat because we have electric heaters in there um, so yeah I don't really want to be doing that and of course I have to go out there to turn them off and stuff which yeah at 10 o'clock 11 o'clock at night in the middle of winter not something I really want to be doing so yeah I've had to bring them in the house um, to do that I need to have a setup that is safe for me now of course um, I'll be doing a lot most of the printing will be during the day while I'm in the Bitsbox studio so I won't be in here but I don't want the fumes to be lingering in the room so yeah I've got this set up which hopefully is enough to combat that I certainly haven't noticed any issues with smells and I know people say like um, that's not always a factor to really um, consider because some resins are a bit odorless and um, for stuff I use um, yeah you notice you do notice um, so so yeah I've had no issues with that thankfully um, and it's not also, not just going by me getting used to the smell, I've asked other people and they haven't been able to smell anything either, so that's a good, good start. Um, I've watched several videos online of people's setups, so this is sort of the conclusion I've come to from those setups. Um, there might be something I'm missing or something else I could do better, so um, if you watch this video and you've noticed anything like that, then please definitely let me know in the comments, but um, yeah, let's just um, have a look. Okay, so yeah, this big ugly black tent is my 3D printers set up. They're all inside there. We'll take a look inside in a minute. It's never going to win any awards for attractiveness, um, but functionality and safety is what this is all about. And um, notice I've got um, Cure Station just set up here as well. I've got another one behind it which I haven't set up yet, but I might end up taking that back down to. Um, the workroom. We'll see. Anyway, yeah, so the 3D printers are in there. So we'll just look around the room first. I have got my satin 2 on the floor. Um, if I really need it, I'll use it. It's got a carbon filter in there. It's not the ideal solution, but if I get desperate, I'll use it. So I'm not always in here. In fact, when we're printing during the day, I'm not even in here at all. I only come in here to stick stuff on the printers. Um, but I still don't want any lingering fumes or anything like that, so... Yeah, that'll be more of a last resort. I think what we've got in here will be enough for majority of orders and stuff. So, on on the bottom shelf, so this is just one of the metal sort of work top things that you can get for, like, garages and things like that. For workshops. So I'm actually used to have it in the workroom. But I've brought it up here. The red trays underneath have bits from people's orders ready to be cured. That's what I'm going to be doing after this video. I've got resin gloves, there's some isopropyl bowl. Got some kitchen towel, always really handy. We'll see more of that later as well. Respirator down the bottom, spare filters and whatnot. Um, but I'm sure you're all dying to see what's in the tent. So, I'm going to crack it open. I've just got these zips. So this is one of them hydroponic grow tents. So... Uh, if any of the neighbours get a look at it, they'll probably think I'm doing something a bit more dodgy, but um, a lot of people use these for 3D printing. And inside... So I'm mainly using the two Mars 3 printers at the moment, but I do have my any Cubic Ultra there as well. It's got such a small build area, but I just love it. I love that printer, so I've just stuck it that, that way on the side. I apologise, it was a bit of a struggle trying to get everything in shot. So I've got just a little spare bit of wood down just for this one to give it a bit more stability. Uh, this one's down on the cutting mat, but I've had to prop it with a couple of bits of cardboard just to get it dead level. 
And yeah, there's bits of kitchen towel down. Again, just for catching resin. You can see already how much we get, especially after washing. So I wanted to put the wash station in here as well. Um, I think it's probably a good idea to keep that in there. I should have the lid on it really. Um, there is another um, tub at the back with a lid on. So ideally you want to be keeping the lid on that as well. Got a little thermometer. Just see the temperature. Obviously one of the big reasons for doing this indoors. Temperatures, you probably want it a little bit warmer than that, but um, I seem to be printing fine. Anything above 15 seems to be absolutely fine. Got a heat gun there just in case. Um, I also have a jug. I do recommend people getting a jug for 3D printing. So if you have to clean out your vat, then a lot of times you're just trying to pour it back into a bottle through a little filter. I find it easier just to do that into a jug through the filler and then you can just pour back in through the jug rather than trying to get it in the bottle. So when the bottle gets low and it hasn't got that sort of weight to keep it up upright so yeah jug seems to be a better option for me personally anyway. So for um, air filtration so what I've got if we can get there or also I do have a little light. There's a little USB light, just sort of clipped up on here. And then at the back here, if we can get there, there's one of these extractor fans. And I've got my power surge bank there. So it's always nice to have some sort of surge protection. And literally I've just got it on this little dial and a plug. And you can hear that, and that is the loudest it goes, which isn't too bad at all. I don't know how well the camera picks all this up, but um, that's not really any louder than maybe you know one of them, like one of them big fans you'll have on in the summer to keep yourself cool. It's not that loud at all. So that goes into a pipe, which then goes out through the top, which then goes up into the wall so a lot of these old houses have um, these air bricks with like a little vent on them I took the vent off 3D printed an adaptive hut which it feeds into and then I've got it so this basically just blows air straight out outside now these air bricks are useful um, for stopping yourself getting mould and stuff around the windows in the winter um, I really, I'm really lucky, I've been in this house 11 years, I've had hardly any issues with mould at all. So we'll see what effect this has on that, but I can always crack the window just a little bit if that becomes an issue. Um, obviously a little bit of mould is easier to deal with than 3D printing fumes all the time, so... Yeah, I just got that doing that. Um, that's one of the main reasons why it's here in this room, because we could just feed it straight into there. I'll just turn that off. Right, I've got a dial as well, so I could turn it down, but it makes this horrible sort of noise if I turn it down too low. But I can just turn it off like that as well, but um, I prefer using the button. And that's on its own channel on the bottom, just so I don't accidentally turn the free printers on or off. Um, so that's essentially it for inside the tent, and then when I've got stuff on the print, I can just zip it up have a fan on and I must say I've not noticed any smells or anything like that so before we go there was one thing um, I did just want to show so I'm going to stick the fan back on and I'll show you um, the, the noise that makes um, when you're not in the room just to give you a rough idea what it'd be like so this is the noise it makes with everything closed up I don't know how well you can hear that and if I back out of the room and close the door, you'll notice you can barely hear it. I apologize, it's a bit dark out here. Um, so I don't even have a proper door on here, it's just like one of these sort of cupboard doors. Um, I will replace that one day, but the door's hardly ever shut. Although I am closing it now, so I've got these on. But yeah, literally, step back a bit, you just. Well, that's not focusing can barely hear it at all. 
So that's reassuring because I'm obviously, I wouldn't want the neighbours to hear it. I won't leave it on overnight. I won't print overnight. Um, but I do print um, late into the evening sometime. Um, end of the day is just white noise. So it shouldn't be disturbing anyone's sleep. So I'm just sitting here editing the video and I've noticed that I filmed this before I put the curtain up. And it's sort of quite obvious that this is right next to a window. And yeah, the blinds are there, but um, they're not going to do a lot to keep sunlight out, especially early in the morning. Especially in the winter months, actually, when the sun's lower, that really just comes straight through the windows. So yeah, obviously the big black tent is handy for keeping it out, but when I need to open that, get prints out and s such, yeah, I do need the curtain. So the curtain is up. That was there before, um, but that all just came down while I was putting this up and yeah I didn't put it back up and um, by the time I filmed the video so yeah it's back up now just thought I'd share that so yeah let's get um, back to the video so you guys are probably bored of just staring at a big black tent for so long so I'm gonna leave it here I'll be interested to hear anyone's comments um, if they've got a similar setup at home or what setup they have um, I've seen several on YouTube and sort of come to this sort of conclusion. I'll leave links for all the products I use down below. They will be affiliate links. So, you know, I get a little kickback if you buy any of them, but um, that's no extra cost to you guys. But yeah, um, it seems to be working okay, despite looking ugly, so yeah. We'll leave it at that. Like I said, you guys probably don't want to keep staring at this black box, so I'll catch you all again in the next video. If you enjoyed this video then please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. You can also click that bell icon to be notified when a new video has gone live on this channel. On the screen now are two more videos that you may wish to check out and a link to our Patreon page also. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon.